Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today I am updating a video I made roughly two years ago. That's, of course, the How to Grind Fast video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to grind credits, XP, coal, and steel as best as you can in the game using both free-to-play methods and paid methods as well. I thought it would be a pretty good time to update this video cons considering we got the Snowflake event right, right around the corner, the Kabarosk and the GK are being removed, uh, the GK being apparently early in 2022, and with a couple of new tech lines that should be releasing in full, it's a pretty decent time, I believe, to update this video. So if you want to go to a certain resource, you can look on the timeline down below. It should be marked, so if you're just here for coal, just find the coal section, go there, and get the information that you need and get to grounding your coal, so forth and so on. So let's go ahead and get started with credits and XP. So credits and XP are probably the two most important resources in the game. You need credits to, well, pay for your ship's service after battle. You need XP to research new ships, and you need credits to, of course, buy new ships, and you need credits to grind signal flags, if you will. So credits and XP... The best thing you can do to boost your credits and XP income is the following. First off, shoot destroyers and submarines when possible. The way that the game calculates your economic profit, it's based upon the percentage of damage done to the ship's overall health. So let's say you have a DD in front of you, you got HE loaded, you're in a cruiser or battleship or whatever, and you blap that DD and you remove three quarters of his health, that is going to give you the same reward as if you just, like, quadruple citadel to battleship and removed 60,000 HP of his 80,000 HP pull. So it doesn't really matter what ship you're damaging, it rewards you on the overall health of the ship. Now we have submarines in the game too, and these ships have barely any health. So you could easily, easily remove a submarine in a salvo or two, or at least take off most of his health in a salvo or two, and that's going to give you the same um, income as if, again, you removed almost all of the battleship's health in one salvo. So make sure you're targeting those ships. Plus two, taking out the enemy's DDs or submarines are certainly going to help your team win the match, of course. And coming with that, you should also go after ships that are of a higher tier than you. If there's, let's say you're in a tier five ship, get into tier seven game, it does suck that you're in a tier seven game, but you've just been handed an amazing opportunity. When you do damage to a ship that's of a higher tier than you, you get a bit of an income boost, about 0.2 to your overall income. And if you're doing damage to a ship that's two tiers higher than you, it's about 0.4 times your income. And then if you're somehow triple up tiered, which I feel sorry for you, it's even more at that point. So yeah, it sucks that you're a tier 5 and a tier 7 game, but if you got a good tier 5 ship that's great at farming damage, something like an Asian Core with its, of course, crazy British BBHE, and you can farm those tier 7 ships down, oh my god, you're going to make an absolutely amazing profit. Or any, of course, tier 5 ship that's great at farming. And that's another thing, too, when it comes to premium ships, uh, tier 8 and tier 9 premiums are probably, you know, the best ones in the game for farming. And sure, we got tier 10 special and tier 10 premium ships, but they can't get that boost from doing damage to ships that are a higher tier than them. So make sure you're going after those higher tier ships and trying to sink them and trying to farm them down. Of course, too, the next one is capturing cat points. Cat points, like sinking the enemy DD and submarines, help you win. Winning gives you an absolutely massive boost to your overall income if you hadn't noticed. Also, capping is one of the most profitable things you can do in this game. A single solo cap ribbon is one of the most viable ribbons in game. You're pretty much guaranteed to get at least a thousand base XP for just one of these ribbons. And an assisted in cap ribbon is roughly worth about half of a solo cap ribbon. So. Even if you don't get the solo cap, you're still getting the assisted in cap. That's still roughly 500 XP per ribbon. So if you're feeling really brave, you can go on and try to cap the entire match if you want to. Now, of course, it may not be wise to do that, but let's say it's late game and you know there's one or two enemy, enemy, enemy ships left, but you're by the enemy cap. It'd be much better for you to go and cap that cap rather than go try to chase down that ship that's on the other side of the map that you're going to spend the next two or three minutes trying to chase him down when you could have gone sail to the one enemy cap that's right next to you, capture it, get that capture ribbon, and get that XP. And... um 
credit ev uh, revenue into your post battles results. That's always the better choice to do when you're farming for credits and XP. Then some general grinding tips in terms of grinding damage or grinding uh, XP and credits as well. That aren't really anything major, but some little things that you can do to help you out. So first off, when you're farming damage and you've got HE loaded, let's say you're firing at a battleship. You set one fire on him. you got another round of HE ready to go, but he's letting that fire burn. Let him let that fire burn. Most battleship players will let a single fire burn if they're over half health. Let it burn. That's more damage for you. Now, granted, if you need the guy dead, yes, please shoot him again. But if, you know, it's like, again, late game or early game and, you know, the teams are uh, pretty fairly matched and, you know, it's not going to lose you the match, you know, let, let him burn that fire. Set a fire on another ship, then come back to him. And hopefully by the time he's let that fire burned out, you can easily set another fire on him again. That way you'll get more damage overall. Again, it's not the most inducive to winning strategy, but it will net you a lot of damage. So rinse, wash, repeat, farm damage. Defense ribbons are also fairly valuable as as well, so if a ship is in your cap, just constantly try to reset them. You get them every time you reset their progress, which if you're playing an American cruiser, it's like just the time that it takes for the shells to get there, so it's almost like you get the ribbon every time you fire at the enemy ship. And of course, too, if they're trying to cap you and you're preventing them from capping, you're ensuring that your team has a better chance of winning, too. And again, winning gets you a lot of boost. Also, when you're grinding, it's better to grind two lines at once rather than just focus on one line at a time. First off, you have a lot more free XP coming into your account from grinding two lines, and playing a different line will make you a better and more rounded player overall. So if you're playing like the American cruisers, why not go in and grind out either the uh, German cruisers or the German battleships or you know, just another line that's a little bit different. It'll make you a better player. And of course, you'll be maximizing your time. If you're pl you just grind, let's say, the uh, Soviet cruisers and you get blapped in the beginning of the match, don't just sit there for the next 20 minutes or 10 minutes and wait for the match to finish. Go play your other ship. Maximize your time, of course. And when you're playing battleships, don't be afraid to use HG when you need to, when there's destroyers left on the... Uh, on the enemy team, when the enemy battleship's bow tanking you, you don't have guns that are big enough to overmatch his bow. Switch on over that HE, farm the damage, be a better battleship for that. And I know, and I've said this too, battleships should be primarily firing AP, but there are times when you need to fire HE and bow in battleships and fighting against destroyers is that one of those is both uh, the time in which you need to use HE. Also, if you're in a pinch for credits and the XP and you're really on like a hyper grind, don't worry about researching all modules on a ship. It may make it harder to play, but there's some tech line ships that are good enough to play without the range module or the, uh, or the engine module, so forth and so on. It'll save you XP and credits in the long run, but again, it may make it a little bit rougher to play. But again, if you're all about hyper grinding and maximizing your grind, don't research all of the modules. You can also sell your own modules in port if you guys didn't know that. Um, shoot, I remember when they added in this feature or when I learned about this feature, I got like freaking 30 million credits from selling all my old modules. So make sure you go check that out and make sure you sell those to get your credits back. Also, of course, too, whatever event is going on in game, make sure you're, you participate in it. You can get special camos that give you boosts, signal flags, and etc. You know, sometimes they just hand out free XP for completing missions for whatever events going on. Participating in these in these events will get you quite a bit of good camos and and signal flags that you can use to boost your your economic earnings. And if you participate enough of the events, maybe you too will have a camouflage screen that looks like this. Now, of course, a good a uh, decent bit of this is from you know buying dockyard ships and uh, paying through events to get ships to do reviews for you guys and such. But a lot of these camels really are just from me participating in events and having an account that's as old as mine. So yeah, you two can get a, a bunch of special camels that really, really, really help boost your earnings. Now, for credits and XP, that's just about it for the free way. Uh, we're moving on to coal now. Now, coal, there's not too, too much you can do to boost your coal earnings, but there are a couple of key things that you can do to maximize your coal earnings. First off, make sure every single day for your daily containers that you get by playing the game, you make sure you always select 1200 coal. 
Oh, 1,200 gold. Make sure you always select the more resource container so you can get 1,200 gold. So I guess technically you're, you're selecting 1,200 coal. That way you're guaranteed 1,200 coal a day. That's the bare minimum you can get. And doing that, it take you a few months, but you can easily get a tier 9 coal ship by just doing that every single day. In addition to that, make sure you complete daily missions, event missions, make sure you collect your daily login rewards, which you get by just logging in every day. So heck, even if you don't have time to play today, just make sure you launch the client, claim your, your, your reward. There's quite a few um, coal rewards throughout the months. That all can easily net you a bit more coal and speed up that grind to that coal ship. Also, depending upon whatever game mode is being offered in-game, uh, they often a lot offer quite generous coal rewards uh ranked sprints brawls that's going on right now so forth and so on they all offer coal as rewards for do for playing those game modes and quite a bit of coal too and a lot of these modes are quite fun brawls is absolutely great right now and it's just a fantastic way to earn coal now you can also join a clan to get a, a coal boost many clans develop their coal port uh, first off, because it gives you a nice boost to your coal income. And that'll net you a little bit of a bonus there every time you collect some coal. Uh, dockyard events, you can also participate in those to complete stages and get rewarded with coal. And again, that's a free way to do that. You don't have to buy the stages, just play through the directives, uh, cash in the tokens, and you'll be rewarded with, with coal depending upon what stage you complete often. Also, you can get coal just by watching streamers uh, with streaming drops enabled. These Twitch containers can drop coal from time to time. And just like this month, and like I mentioned at the start of this video, the Snowflake event coming right around the corner, and they're offering coal for just simply, well, I think it's 300 XP this go-around, or by winning a match in um, pretty much any ship that's from Tier 5 to Tier, se uh, tier 8, you can get coal for doing that. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys watching have quite a few ships in port. I don't think, you know, everyone has 300 ships in port, but most of you probably have at least 20 or 30. And that can net you quite a bit of coal, too, by just going through playing games in those ships and collecting that coal. And again, all this can be done for free. So, pretty easy way to maximize your coal gain. Again, coal, you can't really boost it per se, but you can maximize it because it's, again, offered out to everyone and there's no tricks or anything you can do in-game, like in the match, to actually boost your coal earnings. But make sure you do all that and you'll see yourself sitting on a pile of coal pretty soon. All right, Steel. Yeah, Steel is a bit rougher. You don't really have a lot of options to earn steel in game. It's the most sacred and scarce resource. So you have to either one play through clan battles. You get rewarded still for, of course, completing uh, clan battles, matches, and winning. Um, right now they're doing. Uh, you gotta win three matches to get your your steel uh, model. Right now it used to is just you just win a match and you get your steel. But I guess that was too easy. Of course, playing ranked, ranking out can net you quite a bit of steel. A lot of steel, actually. Uh, they do offer it sometimes a daily login rewards toward the end of the month. So again, make sure you're logging in, collecting your rewards. And daily missions and daily shipments do offer steel. A little bit of steel, though. Now, keep, keep in mind that this is like 20 steel. You need like 30,000 to earn a steel ship. No matter really what you do, it takes quite some time to... To acquire enough still to get a ship even someone like me who obviously i do this for youtube it's like a second job at this point as much as i play i can still get a, a, a still ship like once a year and again there's guys that you know like the super competitive clans that they're sitting on mountains of still but of course they're super competitive clans they always make it to um, hurricane and such and clan battles they always rank out you know things like that uh, but for the rest of us it's not the case now in the snowflake event again you can earn steel on tier 9 uh, ships you get seven was it 75 still this this time around for uh, a victory or 300 xp game in uh, tier 9 ships so that is quite nice so if you got a pretty decent tier 9 ship collection in port you can get a quite a bit of steel this go round which again that's always very nice so lastly the last method of course using money so if you are okay with opening up your wallet and throwing money at the game it's by far the fastest way to grind. Um, 
you often see some players saying World Warships is a pay to win game. I don't think it's a pay to win game, but it's most definitely a pay to save your freaking time game. So, if you want to spend money on the game, the only two things I would even recommend anybody spend money on this again, I'm not saying you have to, I'm saying if you're okay with it. So, don't go nutty in the comment section. If you're okay with spending money, the first off, the best and by far, bar none, best thing you can do is simply buy premium time. Around New Year's and Christmas, premium time goes on sale for half off. So you can easily get a year of premium time for half the cost. And if you do that, done. Just do that, done. You've already massively increased your your income premium time gives you a boost to your credit income to your xp income and reduces the cost of your post battle service so that they're done enough have a nice year enjoy your premium time but if you want to go a bit further and spend some more money premium ships are the next best investment tier eight to nine premiums are the most profitable in terms of their economic income but they are challenging to use i do not recommend anybody watching right now goes buy a premium ship at a tier that they haven't grinded to yet make sure you grind to tier 8 or tier 9 or tier 10 if you think about buying a premium ship at that tier. if you don't you will not know what you are doing you will be a hindrance to your team you will have a bad time and you will waste your money make sure you grind there first then do that and speaking of premium ships there's a lot of really good coal ships are out right now that you can get for free, like Palmer, Napoli, Marceau. These are all fantastic coal ships that are great income earners, and you can get them for free. Don't you gotta spend money on the game. That's what I would recommend you guys uh, should do. But if you're still very comfortable with throwing, at this point now, a large sum of money at the game, you can buy containers to get special signal flags. I think the uh, German battleship containers right now, they're out. You can buy two of the $40 bundles and you'll have 50 of every of the special signal flags easy peasy lemon squeezy you deck your ship out in that you can easily get to the tier 10 game in about 22 matches if you know what you're doing I've, I've made two videos on doing that but at that point you're, you're throwing like 80 90 dollars at the game I don't recommend you do that but if for whatever reason you need to grind like it, it's the day before the car first leaves and you don't want to um, have to grind up the coal for the curve first and you suddenly need to get to the to the uh, GK in a day you can use that method and you'll easily be able to do that and lastly of course premium ships if you got a good farming premium ship refer back to the credits and XP session follow those tips and tricks and you'll be sitting on a mountain of of uh, credits and free XP in no time so guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know if there's any tips or tricks that I missed. Leave them in the comments down below. I will be streaming right here on the channel from 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time to 8 p.m. U.S. Central Time tonight. I hope you guys come out and check out that stream. You can grab a couple of those Twitch containers I was talking about if you guys watch me on uh, Twitch. I hope this guide helps you guys get to where you need to be in your grind over the um, quite busy season where we should be coming up on here once the uh, update 1010 10 drops. And I hope, again, it helped you guys out. Again, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're having a wonderful Friday. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. One way to 30,000 subs, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. We're getting really, really, really close to that goal. Again, you guys are awesome. I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.